Weddings are big business, and wedding barns can provide both charm and beauty. Controversy has emerged over fire safety regulations, and Senator Karen Housley has a bill to clear up the confusion. I spoke with her this week. You are author of a bill that would clarify when wedding barns and other uh, public accommodation venues uh, need to have a fire sprinkler system in place. How did this bill come to you? Uh, this came to me from a constituent of mine. Um, they own Redeem Farms and Grant, and uh, it's a newly remodeled barn, and they were having weddings and events there, and it holds under 300 people. But all of a sudden, they got from the Department of Labor and Industry a notice that they could no longer do the events until they put in this elaborate sprinkler system. And they were like, what do you mean we can't do events? We, we just went through all of the proper channels with a detailed planning with an engineer and they put in fire retardant spray and used the right signage and installed fire extinguishers, did everything that was up to code. And now they all of a sudden were told that they couldn't do it unless they put in this elaborate anywhere from $50,000 to $350,000 sprinkler system. And they, they can't afford to do that. So that's when that's who brought it to me, some real life constituents from Redeem Farms and Grant. So it appears that there's been some confusion, as you mentioned, about which venues need the, the fire sprinkler system and which venues do not. So does your bill clarify that? And what, what is it saying then? Yep, it says if you are a, a rural event center, they actually, there are almost 200 of them around the state and they, they banded together to form MinReva, Minnesota Rural Event Venue Association. And so these are all like small family owned businesses that have a real impact on their community from, you know, if you have a wedding, you have a florist and you have a, a band or, or a, a musician or and a caterer and uh, a, a, all of the things. Then you have people coming to it and they stay in the hotels in the area, go visit your restaurants, go to your gas stations. So they have a real community impact. So this was a big deal to all of them to not be able to have weddings anymore. So what the bill states is if you are a rural event center, you're allowed to not be forced to put this elaborate sprinkler system in um, if you're under 300 people. Because like I said, they already have all of those things in place from the fire extinguishers, smoke alarms. And, and, and so sprinklers, I found out through committee hearing, sprinklers go off once you reach a temperature. That's why you have smoke alarms in the building. Everybody gets out before the sprinklers come on. Sprinklers are only there to save the building, not the people. Okay, so wedding barns, as you just mentioned, have skyrocketed in popularity. And I think I read something like, you know, 15 years ago, there were only a handful. And as you said, there's over 200 who've banded together. Um, the old buildings have a lot of charm, they're pastoral settings, and also, as you said, it helps the local economy. But they are old buildings, and old buildings are susceptible to fire. So are you confident that these venues will be safe? There has never been an incident in Minnesota or across the country of a wedding barn burning down during a wedding. There has been a uh, one wedding barn that in, I think it was North Carolina that, that came down because of a tornado, but never because of a fire. So yeah, it, it, and see the, the law, how it was being interpreted by Dolly was even if you were an open air pavilion barn, you still had to put the sprinkler system in. So it didn't make sense. What makes sense is if you are inspected by your local fire marshal and you meet all, meet all the city and county codes, they're, they're inspecting a building to make sure it's safe. And if you don't get your a certificate of compliance, you can't open your doors for business. So they are meeting all the safety requirements. This is just an uh, overreach by certain groups out there that because they did it, they want everybody else to do it. So speaking of that, WCCO did a story uh, last November about this issue, and they interviewed one barn, wedding barn owner who had put in place a $350,000 fire sprinkler system. Um, and because of that, his rates were higher. And then after a time, he said he lost business because people were going to less expensive venues who had not put in this fire sprinkler system. So from his point of view, this doesn't quite seem fair, does it? Um, he did that by choice, um, and that's kind of where this all started, is brides would go barn shopping, and then he would tell them, you know, we have this sprinkler system, so if anything happens, all your guests will be safe. All those other people out there don't have them, so you shouldn't really be booking your barn over there, and that's, that's kind of how it all started. 
he put that elaborate sprinkler system in by choice. And and the other thing, is, and, and he's totally fine if he wants to save his building in case there's a fire, but all of these other uh, small rural event centers, they they want to make sure that their barns don't burn down either. So so they're doing everything to keep it safe and it, it's, their, it's their property. So uh, there's a few of them in the state that have put those elaborate things in, but it's definitely not needed. There has never been a, a barn that's burned down with people in it and they are safe by meeting all the city and county codes and fire marshals too. And so these city and county codes that you're talking about, then those are referring to like making sure the floor is reinforced and that there's safety exits and that in the event of something, people would be able to get out. If So these wedding shoppers out there now, they're watching this segment and they're thinking, oh, uh, let's get married in a barn. How does one ensure that it is a safe choice? Um, it, it, it really, well, it's never happened. And um, they do have, they, they do have to put fire retardant sprays in the wall. They've got to have the signage, make sure that there's that proper number of exits proper number of windows um, and the fire extinguishers, like I said, the smoke alarms. Um, it's it's just like you and your home. If you don't get your certificate of compliance, you can't move in. So they are passing and the, and the fire marshals actually approved this bill. Um, they, they were not in opposition of it. And we worked with Dolly for the language. So, so if I were a bride out there shopping a, a wedding barn, I think absolutely you should ask um, all of the questions you have if you're worried about safety, but then also ask to see their their approval from the fire marshal, their local fire code uh, uh, inspector. This bill has made it through all of the Senate committee hurdles and it is uh, waiting for a floor vo vote. Uh, there is a House version. It is bipartisan. It, there seems to be movement. Are you hopeful that this change in the language will happen this session? Um, I am so hopeful and it absolutely has to because these wedding barns have been shut down for almost a year. They had to cancel everything last year. They're in there. They want to open up. They want to have weddings. And now with the vaccine, people are actually going to be gathering together again. So we want to make sure that these wedding barns can be the place of gathering and a safe place of, of gathering. And they will be. So I'm, I'm pushing to get it done uh, shortly. Senator Karn Housley, thank you. Thanks for having me, Shannon.